Hi guys, this is episode 5 of my Q School preview series. Today we'll be looking at the women that I think could challenge at PDC Q School. Now I'm not naive enough to think that all five of these will win a tour card. In fact, to be honest, I think it'll probably only be one. But I think maybe four or five of these could play on the Pro Tour at some point during their career. The first one is Makuru Suzuki. She's a two-time world champion and recently played at the Grand Slam of Darts, losing all three matches in the group phase. She did, however, have four match darts to beat newly crowned world champion Gerwin Price, which I think heavily affected her for the next two games. We also saw her at Q School, where she got some more experience to play the men, but only won one match. So it is looking a little bit difficult when she does play against the men, but we know her pedigree from the Women's World Championship. She's already alluded to in an interview that she's willing to move to the UK to pursue her dreams, and I think if she does commit to that, then we could definitely see her on the tour. Next, we'll look at the youngest woman ever to make the BDO Women's World Championships. Bo Greaves was the number six seed and made the semi final on debut, narrowly losing out to Makuru Suzuki. She averaged 80 and 86 in her first two round wins over Tori Kuish and Aileen DeGraff, which I think shows an immense amount of talent for such a young age. She may also made the quarterfinals of the Grand Slam of Darts qualifier. Her winter series was a bit poor, but I think she's got such less experience than the likes of Lisa Ashton and Dita Hedman. It would be really naive to rule her out of getting a tour card in the future. Do I think it's going to be this year? Probably not. And I think she needs to get experience with that format and then definitely the new format of making the last 128 and then doing it again. But I definitely think she'll get one in the future. For me, one player that will definitely win a PDC Tour card is Fallon Sherrick. I also think she's going to make the top 64 in the world by 2023. It's well documented she won two games at the PDC World Championship, but following this up with a 6-6 draw with Glenn Durant at the Premier League and making the UK Open proves she isn't a flash in the pan. Now that she's broken the glass ceiling, which I think Rod Stud put perfectly in commentary, she's not afraid to go out and beat the men. We see Lisa and Makuru have struggled recently to get over the winning line against Ratajski and Price, respectively. But I think now that Fallon's already done it, she's got no fear of these guys, and I think she'll go through Q-School quite easily. I would like to see her on the tour, and I do think she could become the best women's player we've ever seen if she goes on and makes the top 64. You might be wondering why I've included Kareem Hammond in this video, and you'd be right to. But in the Women's Grand Slam of Darts qualifier, she did make the final and was one win outside making the TV event. She was fourth of the Women's Series and fourth on the averages table, and for me definitely best of the rest over the weekend. It took one of the big three players to knock her out on three of the four events, so I think if she got the more experience and could turn them fringe matches around, I see no reason why we couldn't see her representing Australia on the World Championship stage. I don't think she'll win a tour card this year, but she's an aim to look out for, and I think in future years she could definitely get close. I've talked about the psychological barrier already, but Dita Hedman was actually the first woman to beat a man on TV. At the 2005 UK Open, she beat two men en route to reach in round four of the event. She had a good women's series and proved their quality, getting through the World Championship, where she had a slightly disappointing result against Andy Bullard, averaging just 79. I don't personally think we'll ever see Dita on tour, but I felt bad leaving her out of the video, because I do think currently she's got more of a chance than Bull Greaves does. She's done a lot for women's start, and I think if the women's series continues, we may well see Dita Hedman at another World Championships, but I don't ever think we'll see her on the tour. So they're my five picks for the women that I think could challenge at PDC Q School. I only think Sherrick will win a tour card, but all five of them could win games on a day. If you have enjoyed this video, drop it a thumbs up, because it helps me out on YouTube, and it'll help promote the video. Now if you've missed any of the previous four episodes, go back and check the playlist at the end of the video, and I will catch you tomorrow for the players who've lost their tour card this year that I'd like to see come back through Q School and get another chance. So I'll see you then.